is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got John Hoyle back with me. You're the Executive Director of Eastern Ontario, 211 Eastern Ontario. Welcome back. Well, you, you were with us about a month ago. We just had way too much to talk about, and we needed <laughs> to get you back here. What you do is so, so important. Can you tell the folks what 211 is? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, we had way too much fun last time, too, so that's why we had to do this again. Uh, I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, 211 is a number you can call quite simply when you don't know where to turn, when you're trying to find any social service, uh, government service, uh, even health or anything like that. And you, you probably called two numbers already and have been bumped to one to the next. Instead of doing that, you call 211 and we'll discuss with you uh, what the issue is that you're looking to resolve or the, the help you're looking to find. And then we will uh, then uh, direct the person uh, to the very best of our ability to the right place to get the help that they need. And we need to get uh, people uh, to, to know what 211 is because I think too often people call 911. Yeah, 911 is when, it, you know, we actually have fridge magnets that say 911, this is what you call for, 211, this is what you call for. 911 is for emergencies, there's a fire, there's an accident, somebody's, you know, got, had a health I I incident. Uh, but if you're trying to find other services, the 911 tell us they really liked it when 211 came into existence because then calls got diverted. Our biggest challenge is to let more people know about 211. We've never had any money to, 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 uh, to do a big awareness campaign because we've only had enough money to keep the engine going and the wheels turning to help people. And so that's probably one of the reasons I'm here today is to make sure that more people know about 211 and the work we do and the, and the level of quality that we have. And, and one of the uh, topics we're going to talk about today is your funders. Yes. And, uh, you know, people, all, every time I make a presentation, uh, virtual or otherwise, the question I get is, who, is, who, who funds you? Uh, and uh, are you a private sector thing? I said, no, we are, we are not for profit charitable organization. Uh, and, but our main source of funding is the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services. And uh, we're very fortunate to have that funding. The other big source is United Way. So United Way East Ontario which services your area, uh, they are a big supporter, but all the United Ways in Eastern Ontario contribute uh, to our budget. And then uh, the other big contributor to us uh, is uh, two cities, uh, Kingston and, uh, and Ottawa. Um, you know, a large percentage of our calls do come from the greater Ottawa area, just because that's where most of the population is. So they are really important to us. Uh, like every other social service type agency, Kathy, we are underfunded. It's a struggle all the time. Uh, we don't pay a lot of money, but we ask people, our staff all have to be perfectly bilingual uh, because we do all the French services, not only for East Ontario, but for the province. Uh, and so that makes it even more challenging. I spend a lot of my time just dealing with retention and recruitment because, uh, you know, we train people really well. And I just had somebody leave two weeks ago and they've gone to the federal government for $15,000 more. Wow. So, yeah. so what do you do? You know, you can, know. You, you say congratulations. Uh, but uh, it was very sad to lose this person because they were really, really good. But uh, that's, that's the cards we're dealt, so we've got to figure out how to play them. That's right. And I mean, so often people get into the social services field, the caring field, nursing, doctors, that sort of thing, too. Not for the money. They want to help people. Yep. Exactly. And exactly. And that, that, that's a great segue into uh, uh, the, the work of our staff. Um, I you know, one of the things I found in talking about 2-1 across Eastern Ontario in the last four and a half years is people want to know a little bit about uh, uh, the service. What, what, kind of, uh, what kind of training? What, what's your, your, your quality levels and so on? Because if they, especially when I'm doing agreements to help out in emergencies with uh, local municipalities, they don't want to make sure when somebody's going to call 2-1, they're going to be dealt with properly. So first thing is that we have extensive training for our community navigators. We do probably six weeks of intense training before they actually take a live call. We do lots of practice calls before that, but they take uh, they we, they take a training with the Canadian Mental Health, uh, what's called assist. So if they get a call of somebody in great distress, we're not counselors, but you need to know how to talk to them to make that referral to the distress center. We do training on things like uh, indigenous issues, all kinds of wide amounts of training. And we really, when we hire people, we're looking for people that are empathetic, that are good listeners, but are also able to feel comfortable in asking questions. Because I think, as I mentioned in the last, uh, in the last show, that, that people call us and they think they have, you know, that their problem is they can't pay their hydro bill. And so there's a program, but then we start asking a few questions. Oh, well, I, I actually am not gonna have enough money to you know, buy groceries right to, to when my next check comes in. 
And so it ends up a referral to, well, where do you live? And well, there's a food bank here. Oh yeah, and my, I'm a little bit behind my rent and my landlord's threatening to kick me out. So then it ends up being a referral to the local legal aid clinic. So well, many, many times one call will end up with multiple referrals and our staff are very committed to doing that. The biggest problem in terms of uh, the community navigators is uh, it's not the problem, but the thing that disappoints them the most is when they can't find a service or help for people. And in the areas these days of housing and shelter, that is really the big challenge because many times you cannot find something. And you know, to our, to our community navigators, it's not just a job. They really, really want it. They, they, I, they tell me when I have, you know, we, every, every week we meet and they tell me that's the thing that gets them down the most is when they can't actually connect a person to help. Because as you said a minute ago, they're here not for the money, they're here because they really believe in what they're doing. So that's a lot of things that I work with is how to keep them supported for their mental health because this happens from time to time that they can't find that solution. And, and uh, the other thing is our data people that look after all that 7,700 records we have of services, their, their big thing that they like doing is keeping, finding out if they're new services. So when they have a bit of time when they're, you know, they're, they're updating the data records, they will go on Google and go around all the different communities from Belleville to Cornwall to the North of Renfrew County. So you just, is there anything new that we can see here in, in this area? And then we'll contact those organizations and say, we don't have you in our records, but we could refer people to you, which I think that's what you're looking for. Do you mind how, creating a record with us so we can have you add, add you to our database? So that's going on all the time. And when you were saying, you know, you, and I mean, I could, I could feel it, you know, if you're, you're trying to help somebody and you, you can't find the resources for them right yeah. away. You also do follow up though, too. Oh yes, we, yes. we do follow up and, and, and the, uh, we do two things. We, we do follow up. Uh, and so if somebody, uh, uh, if we th sense that somebody, sort of two versions of all, one is if we sense that somebody maybe has their handle on this thing, but not quite sure, we'll see. Can we call you back tomorrow to see how you did? And if they give us the okay, we'll call back. The other sort of not sort of follow, almost instant follow up is what we will do is we will, um, if somebody is really struggling, we will call with them to the agency if it's during the hours that the agency is open and actually advocate for them. But even in those cases, we'll say, can we call you back in a few days? Because uh, uh, we're trying to do more follow up calls to find, to make sure that the loop got closed, that they actually got the help that they needed because if they didn't, then we'll start working with them again to see what was the problem that they couldn't get it. I mean, a lot of times, the other thing about that is we keep track of the unmet needs. and We cannot connect somebody. And we share that. I share that with the United Ways. I share that with the different municipalities saying, here is, you know, there was, there, here's the gap. And, and some of those are obvious gaps, which people are working on, but you can't build, you know, 15,000 housing units in a, in a month. So, it, but it's to keep people focused on what the trends are so that those that have the ability to address those gaps are able to stay focused and do that. And I mean, you have to stay connected with so many agencies and, and, and so many people because when you know better, you do better. And when you don't know of, uh, of something uh, to help, you learn about it. And when you know better, you do better. Well, and the other part is, is up to date. So the other big work that our data curators do is we have to update those records at least once a year, part of our accreditation. So they send out notices saying, could, could you just review your record as a, you know, have you changed location? Has a number, phone number changed? Or you, have you added a service? Or are you taking a service away? Because that's what our community navigators use and they go and look at that. So it has to be up to date. So that's, as I say, those, those data curators, I always tell them, said, you're the engine. We got to make sure that you're doing well because it's, you know, that's the really important, a key part of what we do. And during COVID, it was really crazy because normally we'd have maybe, 75 to 100 changes a week, okay, just across Eastern Ontario, it went up to three, 400. So they were just going, you know, crazy trying to make sure, because people hours were, yes, you know, people closed because of COVID, they couldn't be open. You know, a lot of organizations had volunteers, the volunteers were older, they weren't able to volunteer, so they were able to provide the programs that they were. So it was really kept us uh, very much uh, on our toes. Right, right, right. Now, I, you, I, I've said before too, you know, like I, not to get 911 and 211 mixed up. People will, will be calling uh, 911 when they could be calling 211. On the opposite hand, do people call 211 when they should be calling 911? They do, and we we have a, a good, very good working relationship with 911. Yeah. We would refer them, and they refer people to us 
frequently, and we refer people. Well, there's two one calls. No, call nine one one right away. Okay, and and yeah. uh, and so that they make sure they get to the, the right place. That's a whole uh, different level called, of distress when you need nine one one. Right, right, yeah. exactly. And people get nervous, and so yeah. that's why our people need to be calm and say, okay, here's what you need to do, that kind of thing. But I don't know, Kathy. I, I have a couple of stories to share with you as well of the kind of uh, of uh, calls that we get, and it really ex uh, points out the breadth to what the uh, the range of things that our folks deal with. One of the ones uh, which I actually got involved in was we had a gentleman living in a rural area here in, in East Ontario who called one late at 6.30 at night and uh, I would happen to be here and I could hear a conversation going. I couldn't hear the words with one of our community members. She came to us and said, this gentleman wants to know about the governance structure of, of, of 211. And of course, she didn't have, I didn't, that wasn't one part of her training. <laughs> I said, well, give me the call. So I took the call and the gentleman said, you, you know, uh, um, I, I, what, what, you know, are you a government agency? What are you? So I said, no, we're not for profit. Explain the thing. And he said, you know, and he asked, I told him, and he said, John, you know, I'm over 65. And I said, yeah, well, so am I. <laughs> okay. And he <laughs> laughed, sort of broke the ice. I said, well, how can we help you? And it was really interesting. He had just come back from his doctor. He had a knee problem, a very bad knee problem. The doctor said he needed knee replacement. He was a, a widower. He was living in a small house that he owned. He had very, very little income. And uh, he was told by the doctor he needed to have three weeks of care with somebody with him as he was recovering from the He couldn't be alone. Well, he had nobody. He had no family, okay, and he had no money. So he said, I guess I can't have my knee surgery. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, hold on. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a community navigator, so I'm going to put you back to Marika and Marika will get you connected. And if you don't, here's my cell number if you don't get connected. And I didn't hear back from him. And, and I know that Marika gave him, so here's a place to call. And there we found that there was somebody that would help perhaps, you know, fund that situation when somebody didn't have the money. So as far as I know, he did get his knee surgery and that all worked out fine. Well, my goodness, uh, thank goodness he called. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and but that then you get, you know, other, you, we have chat, okay? We do chat and we do text as well as call and we do email, of course. So we got involved, one of my staff got involved in a chat, uh, well, just, just pre-COVID, young woman, uh, probably, I'm guessing, a uh, teenager, uh, probably 16, 17. She was hiding in the children's section of a public library, chatting how that she had been, um, uh, uh, was tied in uh, with uh, in, in human trafficking in that she was, uh, I guess I don't know if it's an appropriate word, but a pimp. And, and she wanted to get out of it, but they threatened to kill her and her parents. And so we're, we're chatting back and forth. Actually, two of my staff were doing the chat because we wanted to keep connected with her and convinced her in the chat that, okay, we can have somebody come to help you. We contacted the children's aid uh, folks in, in that area. Uh, and then we contacted the police and they were able to go to the public library take her and get her away from that and, and explain to her what they could, could do to help her. So that's a pretty tough situation. Wow. And the other one that tells me that the system does work sometimes quite well, we get a call in the days that the bus station auto was still open, a, a woman calling and uh, Celine in our office took the call and, and she said, I've just arrived on the bus from a major, other major, uh, I think it was Toronto, Montreal and and uh because of a very severe physical abuse by my spouse and Celine could hear a baby crying and she said have you got a baby with you i have two-year-old triplets and she said i have no money i've used all my money to get here can you help me so we called I and mean, there's a lot of agencies and one of the agencies we contacted said we can have somebody there in 20 minutes so we stayed on the phone, so Lynn stayed on chat, kept her just as they're coming. And then the person came on was Mary and she said to talk to Mary, she said, yeah, you're here. Yes, we've got her. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll take her to the shelter or whatever they were gonna take her. And I was presenting to the, uh, the community and social services department of the city a month later, doing it, they were doing a, a, a professional development day just to refresh, they use two and all the time, but they're doing refresh, just doing a refresher. And I told that story. And one of them put up their hand and said, yeah, and that night we got a call, they needed two extra cribs. So we went to Walmart, bought the cribs and took them to the shelter. Wow. You know, so it was, you know, so that that's the kind of thing that we're dealing with all the time. And it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, uh, as you can see, it can be a, an emotional roller coaster for our staff in dealing with this. And we have a little quiet room 
you know, when we're, we're here physically, where if there's a bad, you know, if you're having a tough call, you can go and just sit. And the problem I have is, as we all had, is how do you adopt for that when you're doing virtually? Because yeah. the person's in, sitting at their kitchen table working or they're in their bedroom working, where do they go? So we sort of set up through a chat on, on Microsoft Teams where they can have a chat and then our the supervisor can phone them and talk to them if that situation, because that is really important because you get a, you deal with a call like that. You know, it, it, I mean, I, I tell a story about the young woman with the triplets, you know, I get emotional about it. Right. So yeah. you can see the person handling that call. It's a really tough thing to do. But uh, as I said, they they're here because they believe in the cause and they're going to try to help people to the very best of their ability. Oh my goodness! I, I, those are sad stories, but my goodness, they're they're good ending. So and because of two one one, so my goodness, I thank you for doing that and the care that you have for your staff too. So so important when you're doing this kind of work. So I I appreciate what you're doing to to help people in Eastern Ontario and and your staff. That is just so nice. That's that's a good leader. That's a good leader, John. Good for you. Oh, well, thank you very good much. You. But just remember, everybody, if you don't know where to turn, call two one one. That's right, that's right. John okay. Hoyle, thank you very much, Executive Director of 211 Eastern Ontario.